We are at the K-Love Awards in Nashville, Tennessee, and right now I am sitting down with Building 429. I'm joined by Jason and Michael. Thank you guys so much for right. joining yeah, me. Thanks for having us. Yeah, so you guys have been a band for quite a long time. 15 years, right? Yeah, 15, that, 99, started yeah. 99. That is a long time. Did you guys ever imagine that you would be where you are today? It's kind of a... That, weird. that looks like a no. You didn't know because it. it, it <laughs> kind was, of yes, yeah, but there, kind there was, of not. Yeah, there was at the a, same time. I guess it's, it was one of those things where it was like this crazy dream yeah. that no one understood, mm. and that actually caused relationships to kind of fall apart and stuff like that. Not 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 like girlfriend boyfriend, but family stuff was difficult at certain points because nobody really believed that this could happen, and. Um, and I, I think there were times when we probably wondered if it could happen, but yeah. we were super motivated. Just mm. we just believed anything was possible, and um, and so we kind of just we did the only thing we knew how to do, which was if you want to do something, go do it. Yeah, and work hard. And yeah. just work hard yeah. and see what happens. Yeah. Uh, what do you make of something like the K Love Awards? I mean, it's really exciting. You have all these other Christian artists out here, and you guys are being recognized for the work that you are putting out. Yeah. You know, the Caleb Awards is really a cool thing. I mean, anytime we come to something like this, we get to hang out with all of our friends and we get to kind of just high five each other and talk about what God has done in the, in the last year. We celebrate art, we celebrate music, we celebrate um, our, our our other friends who are artists. Mm. And um, and really, for any time that there's something that's growing, that uh, which is what's happening with the Caleb Awards. Every year it grows in an industry that is facing its challenges right now. It's neat to be a part of something that's growing and that we see the fan base is really excited about. So we love it and we're excited to Talk be Talk to me about your fans. What do they mean to you? I don't know. I mean, they're everything. Yeah. <laughs> that's why we do what we do. You know, it's you know, it's for them. And uh, it's just cool to go out there, you know, every night and get to lead, lead them in worship. And we just kind of like, we're a band that really live. We thrive on mm. the relationship with our fans, especially in our live show. And just to get to go out there and do that every every night is like it's amazing. It's why we do what we do. Do your fans and their kind of real life stories ever play a part into your songwriting? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, the new record. You probably tell the where I belong story. Or yeah, where I, where that's yeah, really it's great. Cool story. Um, you know, every record there's a story that somebody that we met. But there was um, I had a lady in my small group who who uh, was diagnosed with cancer, breast cancer, and mm. it was kind of an ugly thing. You know, like just. Every week she'd come back with some more bad news, and it got to the point where, you know, her news was, we don't know if we're gonna make it, mm. you know, and she had two beautiful kids and awesome husband, and <clears throat> but anyway, gathered in our in our living room, and began to pray over her as we did every Tuesday night. But in the middle of a prayer um, session, she kind of cried out, "Take take the world! I just need Jesus," and. Uh, you know, you can have it all. God, I just need Jesus to be real right now. And so the next day was a writing session. And the next day I drove down to Nashville and Take This World, Give Me Jesus was on my mind. And we wrote that song. And, and because she was willing to share her story, because and it's interesting, some of the greatest songs that we've had that come out of the moments that are the, the darkest. Mm. You know, like when you're desperate and when you're really honest and you're getting really truthful, those are the songs that tend to really connect with people. And so that song went around the world and inspired a whole lot of other people. The stories that we have now heard because of her story, it's unbelievable. Well, talk to me about your most recent album, We Won't Be Shaken. Uh, mm. Where did the inspiration come from this album? Yeah, I mean, We Won't Be Shaken. <laughs> we, we watch the news a lot. I guess we're old now. I don't know. but. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Are you calling me old? Because no. I watched the news. Oh, okay, good. Oh, yeah. we're, we're still cool. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We just felt like we were at the time when we were writing the "We Won't Be Shaken" record. We felt like we were um, just watching the news and hearing a lot of people that were like shaking to their core, just like really doubting everything about God and about His faithfulness. And people at our shows would come in and they'd say, "Man, have you seen this? This is what's going on." And and you know, we, we as you read the scriptures, and especially in the, in the Book of Psalm, uh, you read over and over again this phrase. I will never be shaken, we won't be shaken. But it's never associated with, I'm so strong that I'll never be shaken. It's never associated with when bad times, or, or you know, when good times come, I won't be shaken. It's, it's always associated with the Lord is my rock, he is my refuge, my fortress, where I will never be shaken. Mm -hmm. And so we just wanted to write that, that thought and wrap an entire record around that thought. 
I imagine that you guys are kind of like a family because you've been around each other for quite a while now, and um, so you have this fellowship together. Yeah, there's definitely a brotherhood, and mm-hmm. which surprisingly a lot of bands don't have. Um, <laughs> we're like we're pretty much like all best friends, so we hold each other accountable and lift each other up. So, I mean, a lot of it comes from that. Yeah, I mean, if we had we and we have our bad days too, right? I mean, we really do. We we have oh. tough times and stuff like that, but. Um, the cool thing about the four of us is that all of us have quite a bit of fight in us. Mm-hmm. And so um, we've just found a way to really put that fight to good use, to, uh, to, to, you know, to make records that are not always easy to make, to make statements that are not always easy to make, and to go out and give the people, the, the 100 people that show up the same show that the 3,000 or 4,000 get. Yeah. You, you should, those, are, those are some of the coolest moments to be honest backstage right before we're going to go out and there are times when we play shows that are really um, difficult to play like you know I don't know promoter messes up or something like that and there's not many people mm-hmm. and right before we go on there's this kind of galvanized moment that happens where we all look at each other and it's like we're throwing this down I mean here it comes we're, in fact you may get a better show tonight because of the aggression and the idea that um, that you know we have this fight inside of us. And, and it's funny, those shows tend to be some of the greatest shows we've ever played. We tell a story that's hilarious, but we, when we were young, we booked a show at some college down in South Texas, and they did not tell us that it was spring break weekend. <laughs> oh, man. And we drove 17 hours in our tiny little van, and we played for two people. Like, literally, there were two people. And we, pla- and we played the whole hour and a half show. Yeah. We had to, oh we were my goodness! To play that's an hour so and disheartening. What what do you do? Those two <laughs> guys or people, whoever it, they were, got a really great show. show. <laughs> you know, I, yeah. What do you do? I don't know what we would do today. Like, to, I, I guess today we'd look at each other and yeah. right, and go out there and go. You we'll know, just do it anyway. But um, we 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 always found a way to see the silver lining. We found a way to hey, well, we get a good rehearsal, and um, and we still there's some there is something about music that you believe that one concert for one person could change everything. Mm. Like, I don't know how to explain that as an artist. Yeah. It's just something that's like deep inside of us. And there's a part of us that believes every night there's a chance that the world could change. And, uh, and I think that's what keeps us coming back on those really hard nights. How do you feel that you're able to reach non-believers with your music? We play a lot of state fairs. And stuff like that. That's fun. And we love it. Um, you know, you can always get a fried stick of butter if you'd like, <laughs> um, which we don't. But um, don't the point lie. being, those state fairs are outdoors. And it's always amazing to watch the crowd. When we start, it's the people who know us. Mm. About halfway through the show, the crowd doubles. And it's the people that don't know us. And then, and that's almost every time we play. Without, without, without fail, People that do not know who we are walk into the arena and they're like, who, who is this? And we just find such great strength in being authentic. Mm-hmm. And just, yeah. we're not changing the show for you. We're not going to change it and suddenly not talk about Jesus. But what we are able to do is play great music that people are like, wow, that's really good. That then allows us to say, listen, we're here today because we have hope. And then I can just jump right into it. And there's never been a show that we didn't jump right into it. Um, and I don't know how to explain that. There have been times when we've wondered if we shouldn't be so massively overt, but it, we couldn't do it. It was impossible. Like you'd go out and play a show, and you think, "All right, this is where I probably shouldn't talk," and it would it just, just start. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I just start talking. And you just share the gospel. The gospel, as yeah. it is, and to maybe to our detriment at times, but honestly, we really don't care. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good way to be, I think. <laughs> um, so you guys just debuted your new single, Impossible, yeah. when you're uh, touring with Winter Jam. Yeah. What is Impossible? What's the message behind it? Yeah, we 15 years of doing autographs and meeting our fans and knowing who they are, and, and the two prominent conversations that we've had, other than a high five, hey, you're awesome. Um, two conversations, conversation number one, man, it looks so impossible. Would you pray for me? And then conversation number two, Hey, let me tell you, it looked impossible. Let me tell you what God did. And we just wanted to wrap that up in a song. We just wanted to write this whole song that says that your current obstacle, whatever the mountain is that's in your way, it's not just an obstacle. It's also the open door 
that God walks through to mm -hmm. show himself faithful over and over again. Because if you look through the word of God, you find that God used broken people to move mountains, bodies of water, whatever, uh, over and over again. And I think that one of the things that we find great comfort in is that he does use broken people because that's who we are. We're so imperfect. But the song Impossible is really about telling people to dream big again and, the, and the, to believe that anything is possible and to know that God is going to use you because of your brokenness, not in spite of your brokenness. One of the things that I read about you was how you came up with Building 429 and you had this name challenge <clears throat> that you guys <laughs> used to do. Michael, yeah. what's the name challenge? Well, the... Uh, our name comes from Ephesians 429, which says, Let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, except that which is helpful for building others up. And it actually came from his wife. Did like She was in charge of a youth group, and they mm -hmm. did this thing called the 429 Challenge. And where when anybody would say something negative or not necessarily nice about somebody, they would say, Hey, 429. And it was just kind of a little reminder to you know make sure you use words to lift people up and encourage them. That's so cool. Yeah. I'm going to take that with me. There you go. Yeah. I don't know if everyone will know what if I say 429. They'll They're be like, like, what, what does that, that mean? That? Uh, look up a chance to share, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you guys so much uh, for joining us. We just really appreciate you taking this time to be with us.